Hey, what's up? My name is Matt Workman, and in this video, I'm going to be documenting making a new scenario for my app called CamOp Simulator. So to do this, the first step is to go into the mocap volume, and I'm going to record myself just walking, sitting down, and then getting up. And then I'm going to bring that mocap data back into Unreal Engine, process it, and then we're going to build a little scene in Unreal Engine and make a whole CamOp uh, simulation scenario so that camera operators can actually practice this uh, with their wheels. So I'm going to go down into the mocap volume and get started. So welcome to the mocap studio. I've done some major surgery in here. Uh, the first thing that we can see here is that I've taped out the floor. I'm going to move this chair here for a second. This square here on the floor is roughly 10 feet by 10 feet with this being the middle uh, on both axes here. And what I've done is I've moved my cameras around. So on each side of the square, we have two cameras facing in, roughly in the center of these squares. So we have two there, two there, two there, and two there. I can show this in the 3D view uh, that Vicon has of the cameras but that is the main change. I will say that when we're in this like five by five right here, it's very clean. I've been checking the occlusion and what we can see. It's pretty good. One of the new things I've done, because I have 10 cameras, is that we have eight in the air and now I have two on the ground. So, or on the kind of lower level. So I actually have one there and I have one there. So the low cameras are kind of set up like how you do Steam VR, like on opposing corners. I have those, but they're just for like the low cameras, like that. Uh, up top, again, we have two on each side of the square, basically. And that's more your standard like optical mocap setup where you have, you know, minimum eight cameras, or you could do it with like six I've seen, you know, take one off of each side, something like that. So uh, we're gonna do a couple mocap takes here, and then, you know, see how the new setup is doing and how the coverage is. One thing you can see in the Vicon view is that if a marker ever turns red like this, it means that no camera can see it, can see the marker. And we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. On the hands, there's just gonna be so many, but we really don't wanna like lose the feet, for instance, like this. Now no one can see my foot, right? So that's sort of what the low camera is that I'm pointing to in the, the Vicon space, that one. That's sort of what that one's looking for, uh, in my opinion. That's what I'm trying to get. It's just to have like a little bit of a floor view. So to start, I'm just gonna do an idle, uh, a standing idle. This is for one of the NPCs that's there. They're just kind of standing in the back. Then they talk to the guy, and then they go back. So I'm just gonna idle here like this. Not really a lot going on. Uh, I might have to loop this part of the animation. So just kind of a custom standing idle. Then the guy comes over and talks to him. Just a little bit of talking, you know, looking around kind of, and then back to idle. And I'm just gonna idle for a while. And I didn't record behind the scenes of it because I did it yesterday, but I already did like the main actor walking around, did some retargeting testing, it went pretty well. So I'm gonna put the chair here and this is just the other actor sitting at the table, just idling. So they're just gonna be sitting there kind of like listening. Okay, ready and action. They're talking, they're talking a little bit. Still just talking. And then they think the actor gets up and kind of leaves and goes over there. And they're talking with someone for a little bit and they're still just sitting here. And then they, uh, then they walk off screen and kind of just like back to idling. So pretty, pretty random uh, animation there, but that's, these are the parts that I need to kind of stitch this stuff all together. Okay, so that wraps up the mocap segment here. Uh, I did completely redesign and move some cameras around. I don't know if this is their final positions, I'm gonna keep playing around, but what I've always wanted to try is to have some low cameras. So I've got one there and one there. So that's fun, makes me wanna get some more. 
but we have the new uh, camera setup, which I think is working pretty well. Didn't see too much occlusion there. And I recorded three different parts. I recorded uh, the actor walking in, sitting down, talking, and then getting up. That's like the main actor we're going to follow. Then I mo-capped the actor that's just sitting there and waiting, and also did mo-cap for the actor that's standing kind of uh, off to the side and then talks to the the main character. There's no real story here. Eventually I'll start doing actual lines with this type of stuff, but for now I'm just trying to get the body and the retargeting and everything else uh, underway. Okay, so I'm back at my main workstation and I've imported all of those Vicon mocap takes. So I'm gonna open up one of them right now, version two here, and we'll see that we have our Vicon skeleton, which is black, and it's walking around looking pretty good. I think I resampled it to 30 frames per second just to keep the file size down. We could do 60, we could do 120 frames per second. It's just, that's a lot of data. Uh, I really don't need it for what I'm doing. And we'll see that the Vicon data is very clean, pretty much perfect. Um, but the issue is we're going to be putting this data, this mocap data onto a metahuman. So what does that look like in UE5? I'm gonna pause this. So luckily in UE5, we can use something called the IK Retargeter. So this window is kind of like crazy looking here, but basically we can take the motion from the Vicon skeleton and apply it to the metahuman skeleton. And luckily my body, which this Vicon skeleton has been scaled to my body, uh, is pretty similar to the male tall normal. Male tall normal is uh, maybe six inches taller than me, something like that, maybe a little more. But overall, we're pretty similar proportions, so the data does pretty well. So I'm not going to go over this workflow um, exactly here, but this is using the, does this have the leg pop? It does, okay. So we ended up doing a better version of this as well, um, but I'll play this here. This is one of the initial retargets coming from UE5. There was a little leg pop, but I did end up fixing that. And we'll see that, again, on the left, is the Vicon skeleton, and on the right, without the head, if you've ever used metahumans, that's the metahuman uh, male tall normal skeleton. And the retarget's pretty good. There's a couple little issues that I go and clean up specifically regarding metahumans, have some very specific things you wanna look at, but uh, luckily, overall, this workflow is quite easy in UE 5.4 and 5.5, it's pretty much the exact same thing. And then I'm going to export these new metahuman animations. I'm going to bring those into my project called CamOps Simulator. So let's go head over to that project. So I've opened up CamOps Simulator, which is a UE 5.5 project. Um, I have a folder called MH System, and this has a lot of the stuff that I share between my different projects, one of which is metahuman animation. So let's take a look at the metahuman animation that's now in CamOps Simulator and it's retargeted to a metahuman body. And I did fix the legs and the shoulders and the neck, but the hand, there was still a couple like occlusion issues where the hand pops and the hips kind of do like a, uh, but it's very subtle. If I really cared, I'd go and clean it up. But uh, I think for Chem Op Sim, it's completely fine. Uh, if I was delivering this for like a cinematic or something, we'd go in there and just fix out any little noise jumps. You just like delete those keyframes away usually, smooth it all out. But so I have a whole collection of these mocap takes that I just did. Uh, they're in this folder here. And then what I do is I build a little scene. So in here are three metahumans. Um, this is gonna be our main character that we're gonna follow, kind of an extra, and then someone that's like interviewing him. There's no dialogue, there's no script. I just wanted to have a scene where someone stands up and down. And we just have three Basic metahumans, no game logic built into these ones. Um, they're not paw, or they're not character AIs walking around. They're just straight like uh, I'm going to get animated metahumans, really stock blueprint. Uh, this, these are custom clothes that I've made for them, and these two skins here are supposed to be like film crew skins. Those are available on Fab right now. And this skin, however, this is a female tall underweight. This is a custom skin I made for Camop Simulator, and she is actually an optimized medium metahuman, which I've sort of decided is not high enough quality when they're in, in the way that I'm using them right now. But they are, in general, if they're kind of like the mid-ground, and especially the background, really good quality and they're optimized, but their animations aren't as detailed and as high quality as the cinematics, of course, or probably even the high ones. So 
kind of figure out what level of metahuman I want to use for this current project. There's a lot of different levels. But we chuck all of them into a sequence that I'm going to open up right now. Um, I'm usually using two monitors. Right now I'm screen recording, so I just have one. And if we look at grip seven here, oh, I did the corrective animations here. Okay, fine, fair enough. So if we look at this now, um, this metahuman here should be grip seven. Yeah, that's him. And we'll see that this blue, uh, uh, this purple track here, that is the main mocap animation. So he's gonna walk around and come sit down. And wherever he sits, I just kind of place the chair under him. And one of the main things that happens that I'm not gonna exactly show right now is that when I sit in real life and then the metahuman after the retarget sits, he doesn't fit the kind of arbitrary height of this virtual chair here. That's what this uh, layered corrective uh, track is doing. It's basically lowering the hips to make them actually hit the chair. And then when he stands up, I have the reverse and goes back and blends back to like the kind of um, native motion capture. And you can see that from this walking arc that like, you know, the chair is pulled out, right? So this doesn't like really make sense. Like why is the chair there, right? He would have pulled it out and then tucked it back in. That's certainly something I could mocap. I can mocap chairs. It's a little, it's a little tricky. And then getting it into here is also tricky itself. But um, for this one, I was like, let's just keep it simple, not mocap the chair and have him tuck it in whatnot. So we're doing a little bit of cheating. But if you look at where the camera angle is going to be, it's from this side, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play this in a second. Uh, you wouldn't be able to tell; it's pretty subtle. So that one's sort of like the main heartbeat of the scene, and the other ones have to react. So if we look at character B here, or grip eight technically, we'll see that this is that mocap take I think I recorded a behind the scenes of, and I've actually had to break it up. This first part is an idle; he's just idling, and then I repeat that part and blend it, he just idles again, not the best transition, idles again, and then I blend into the talking animation and then just kind of let it end natively because I didn't have a script or a timer, I just kind of winged, you know, standing there and talking. So I had to repeat these two sections and then blend into the talking part here. So that's generally what this process looks like. There's sort of like usually one master clip and I'll let that run the timing get that perfect, and then just kind of adjust everyone else's mocap by splicing up different sections, repeating them. And if it's really bad or like I get the final vision, then I would just go back and record um, a better timed version of this. Now I know how long the sequence is, like this whole thing's like 45 seconds. So I just have a better idea on what the other actors would be doing. So this is kind of my process for putting cinematics together. And if we were gonna do uh, the face, and have dialogue, which I'll probably start doing for Cam Up Simulator, then we'd have a script and we'd have like much stricter timing and then you can just loop the face. That looks like kind of crazy. Um, then the question is, do you record the motion capture for the face live with the body or do you do it all in post using many different techniques uh, coming up that we'll be able to do? But so uh, let's just watch the cinematic back in kind of like behind the scenes mode here in Unreal Engine mode, just to kind of see like what this looks like. So he walks in, kind of addresses the, the guard. I don't know, this scene doesn't make any sense really. And then sits down, the chair's already pulled out perfectly, kind of weird. Then these two have a bit of a conversation about what we do not know. And then he's like, hold up. <laughs> good hand mocap, it's pretty good. He's got the finger. He walks over to our, oh, the camera moves too. Um, but uh, talks to the guard and then he's going to just walk off. So why make this kind of random scenario? Well, I'm going to hop in and actually play it and kind of show you what camera operators uh, are needing to practice here and why this scenario is helpful. So what you should be able to see is that when I spin this left wheel, you can kind of see this camera on the right. It's panning, right? And that's it's using a virtual Libra head that I made. And then if I spin the wheel to the to the right here, that's going to tilt that head in a very, very physically similar way to the real world version of that head. Like the rotations, pivots and everything are in the right place. So what we need to do here, and then you see the technocrans kind of moving around. What I'm going to do is zoom in to about uh, a 40 mil here, 41 mil. And my job as the camera operator when you're using a remote head or a geared head is to follow the actor. So I'm going to try to keep his headroom in and we're panning to the right. I'm going to hold, 
Let him kind of walk through. We're gonna tilt up a little bit for the headroom allowance, and now we're gonna try to land this here. So right now, this is a bit of an awkward frame, and I'm kind of keeping the character in the top right's head in frame. I'm gonna pan to the right just a little bit here. Then he's gonna stand up. We need to anticipate this. Uh, I overshot it, right? So this is what we have to practice. Then the camera moves to reframe into this two shot and I'm talking and not paying attention. But this is what you do in real life if you're a camera operator and these little movements and these little timings, they make a huge difference in how the scene feels. And if you're like, oh, why do you have to use wheels? You could use a joystick, but um, you're gonna lose independence of pan and tilt, which can be really bad for narrative filmmaking. So you'll see it like the really high end uh, even for simple dialogue scenes like this, like not a lot of action, a lot of high-end camera operators are going to use a geared head or a remote head because it's on a crane or a boat or something or a car rig. You're going to want to use wheels. Uh, and I missed the turn there. Or I missed his stand-up. So I'm going to zoom in even further where it's even worse. Of a, it's even more of a problem. We'll go to like a 70 mil. And I'm going to slow down my, my settings here a little bit. And now we're gonna play this whole thing from a medium and it matters even more. And you probably wouldn't do a, a crane shot in the medium. So let's do this again. So now it's a lot tighter. You have to do this a lot better. We're gonna let him kind of walk through the frame here, tilting up, ooh, uh, and down. Ooh, not, it was okay, it was okay. So now we're just holding this boring shot here, but the hardest part is pre-doing his stand-up, right? Finger goes up, now we go up, Oh, he went out of frame. So it's tricky and this is what you do on set and that would be like a failed take if you did that. Like you would have like kind of botched the whole scene. So kind of high stakes, right? So like you just cost the set how much money to reset and do this again because you screwed up, you know, the, the lead actor's stand-up scene. This is why camera operators have been requesting this scenario and why having accurate mocap for it uh, just makes it feel more realistic. Ooh, I'm letting his head go out of frame. Oh, oh. Okay, so I haven't practiced this as much as I should. Um, so let's go for it again. So what you want eventually is during rehearsals, you get muscle memory. Your arm knows how far to turn. I haven't been doing that. So we're gonna go up, uh, overshot it, and then we're gonna hand off to our other actor. And so it's very much a muscle memory thing. You would just rehearse this, rehearse this, but um, I'm doing it a bit sloppy. But you know, camera operators that do this a lot, they just have it like down as like a feeling. So that's the reason this type of mocap um, for Cam Op Simulator is really important because if I tried to animate his walking, some professional animator could probably do it in like a natural way, but I can't. But I can walk and sit down naturally with mocap and I am not hitting these shots very well. So that is a little bit of a behind the scenes look at how I produce uh, camera training simulator scenes for Cam Op Simulator using my Vicon mocap system for targeting in UE5 and then using actual Unreal Engine 5 to make real-time simulations or games. There are game modes for this, but I really think of it as like a training simulator, uh, like you'd have for like a corporation or something like that. And uh, this scenario will be in the next update of Cam Op Simulator, which I'm gonna try to get out before Unreal Fest because I'm gonna be gone for a very long time uh, for that one. And if you have any questions about mocap or Unreal Engine 5 or your CamOp Simulator user and you have requests and any feedback on that, uh, this scenario came from a very common request. Many operators were asking for the standing sitting scene. This is one of them. I'm gonna do probably more complicated, more fun ones. Uh, and it's all just good practice so that you can feel a little bit more confident on the day when you're on a big enough shoot to have like a techno crane and you have to hold these medium shots and not mess it up ever basically. That wraps it up for this video and I'll see you on the next one.